Beautiful. Thank you, Todd. Good morning. Today is Pentecost, the day we celebrate the birth of the church when God worked in a very powerful way, transforming the early church into being faithful followers of Jesus Christ. And today we're also celebrating our 50th anniversary as a church. In fact, we've been doing it already and we'll continue to do it throughout the year. Uh, realizing again God's spirit that has worked throughout the years. On that first Pentecost, after Jesus' death and resurrection, Peter got up and preached a sermon recalling the prophet Joel's prophecy centuries ago. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. God's Spirit continues to be poured out to us this morning and is our hope and prayer that you experience God's presence this morning. We are so glad that you're here in person and online. Later on in the service, we'll be partaking of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And for you folks at home, we invite you to get those elements ready. Our mission is to be Christ's disciples, to celebrate God's grace, to create community, and to make a difference. And we do believe that everyone needs a church home and extended family to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. And throughout the years, we have been able to do that for one another. And today I want to uh, introduce some in a new part of our church family. This is Caitlin Martinez. She is our new summer youth ministry intern. Can we give a clap offering to God for Caitlin? And Caitlin will now be coming up and giving the sermon. Thank you. That's terrific. No, but welcome. We're glad that you're uh, helping to be uh, helping our youth ministry this summer. Uh, this is this year of celebration, and uh, we have come up with some different things for us to celebrate, uh, especially during the summer we're inviting guest preachers, either former pastors of the church or members who became pastors to preach, and we thought we would eat some breakfast treats along with it. It's not a big breakfast, so don't, you know, you'll need to eat at least sometime during that week. Um, but we do hope that you'll come and celebrate with us, especially seeing some of these old faces and to hear how God's spirit has worked in their lives uh, throughout. Uh, there has been a lot to go into our 50th anniversary celebration. At some point, not right now, I would love for you to come forward and to see this beautiful communion table pyramid that Kathy Drover did. It is remarkable and beautiful. And uh, we are so grateful. How about a clap offering to God for Kathy? <laughs> and others have worked hard at this day. Uh, we're glad you're wearing your blue and your red. And we're going to afterwards, we're going to have a wonderful barbecue. Uh, we have some extra tickets. So if you didn't uh, reserve yours, uh, you can join us uh, in the fellowship hall after the service. It will be uh, wonderful. We're gearing up for our homecoming weekend, which will be October 22nd and 23rd. Uh, that Saturday night, we're going to have a big gala celebration at Northgate uh, Country Club, just right near our church. And uh, then that next morning, uh, a big celebration, and uh, the Reverend Dr. Tom Toole will be preaching on that day. We also want you to be aware that we're going to go back to Cuba. In fact, you've seen some of these old pictures of slides of some of our Cuba trips in the past. They have been very memorable. It's a partnership membership, I mean partnership mission trip, and uh, we would love for you to join us on that Cuba trip. Today we have incredible music, okay, all throughout the service. Uh, it is awesome. Uh, Jennifer wrote a beautiful anthem that the choir is going to sing. We're going to sing together, close the service, singing a hymn that Kinley did uh, for this service as well. But every part of the music, this next song that we're going to sing, here's one of the um, verse, uh, stanzas in it. Call us to learn of your mercy. Teach us the way of your peace. Give us, you ready? Hearts that feel, give us hands that heal. 
you know, our theme for our 50th anniversary is hearts and faith, hands and service. So let's stand and sing together about God's spirit that is at work today. Buenos dias. Guten Morgen. Bonjour. Did you understand what I was saying? If not, I was saying good morning in different languages, which brings me to our lesson for today. Today is Pentecost Sunday, a very special day we celebrate as the birthday of the first church. It was the day that Jesus' apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they themselves were able to speak many languages and spread the gospel of the good news to all the nations, just as Jesus told them to do. 
Let's watch this short video to learn more. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, yes. They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle and thought the believers were just acting oddly. Nah. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshipped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. What an amazing story. Just as Jesus promised, he sent his Holy Spirit to help the disciples spread the gospel of the good news to everyone. And on that day, over 3,000 people became believers and started the first church. And the great news for us is the Holy Spirit is still here with us today to help us live godly lives and share God's love with everyone. So let us always remember to thank God for his many wonderful gifts, but especially his gift of the Holy Spirit, which led to his wonderful gift of the church. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon. Bye. The Holy Spirit does amazing things, and we have a handful of our kids that are going to come up and sing for you about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit makes them do. And after that, they'll go off for Sunday school. So kids who are my singers, come on up. Don't be shy. Come on.
shout, Amen. I'm gonna shout when the spirits are shout, Amen. When the spirits are shout, I'm gonna shout right along. I'm gonna shout when the spirits are shout, Amen. I'm gonna sing when the spirits are sing. I'm gonna sing when the spirits are sing. I invite all the children who are here to go off for your Sunday school time together. Have a good time. Our next song is going to be led by the band. It is called Holy Spirit Rain Down. Holy Spirit Rain Down. Come and 
change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, rain Northwood means to me love, friendship, fellowship, and the joy of being with God. Maybe agree to disagree is the most distinctive mark at Northwood. But what always amazes me at our church and what makes this place even more special is how we strive to welcome everyone. I mean every person. No matter who you are or what you did, no matter if you are a Republican or a Democrat or independent, no matter if you are from Texas or from New York, no matter if you are from Cuba or from South Korea or from Ghana, no matter if you consider yourself a sinner or the holiest person in the world, this church will always welcome you with open hands and open heart, hoping that you can feel God's grace and our love that you can feel at home.
me what you love about our church, Northwoods. What I like about our church is that I got baptized there and I've been there all my life. And so I've grown up with the people there. It's my family away from home. Let's pray together. Loving God, God of Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have called us to be a chosen people, a living church, a house of grace. And as we celebrate our 50th anniversary, we come together this morning, and first and foremost, we want to worship you. And to remember that day when your spirit filled the lives of those first followers of Jesus. And Lord, let us feel your presence this morning in this community. In the fellowship of your people that for 50 years have worshipped you and served this city and the world with open hearts and hands. We know that we would not have been able to achieve anything if you had not guided us if your spirit had not led us and strengthened us. So acknowledging that we cannot move forward if you do not lead us and bless our work, we place all our energies, all of our efforts and plans into your hands. Lord, we give you th thanks for those who have served in this community so devoutly. Thank you for their humble service which reminds us of the way your song shows us to serve and to love each other. Thank you for the ministry and service which helped this church to be more than a building, but rather a shelter for those seeking peace in the midst of distressed lives, a shelter for those seeking compassion for their brokenness, a shelter for those seeking forgiveness for their mistakes, a place that shares food for those who are hungry. A place where your presence is real through signs of kindness and compassion. And we know, Lord, we are not perfect. We have fallen and still fall short many times. That is why we need your grace to be the church you want us to be. A welcoming church that continues to witness to your gospel bringing a message of hope and reconciliation for our country. We pray, Lord, now for this country, for our country. We wish we could do more than praying as we face so many uncertainties and so much violence every day. So we ask you to grant us with your wisdom and grace to show compassion to those who suffer, especially to the families of mass shooting victims. Grant us with strength and courage to speak truth to those in power. Grant us with humility to recognize that anything we do or say are nothing if you are not with us, if we don't seek your kingdom first. We pray all of this in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just wanted to share the inscription on this anthem. If I can read it. It's on the screen, but I know it's really small. Commissioned by the Sanctuary Choir of Northwoods Presbyterian Church, Houston, Texas, on its 50th anniversary, in loving memory of charter members Paul Benson and Colleen Hosford.
birds in vain. Each sister and mother, with love for each other, united in praise and that serve. In generous labor, as neighbor helps neighbor, emboldened by Jennifer and choir and band, hearts in faith, hands in service. I also want to thank our 50th anniversary celebration team. Are you here? I mean, I know some of you are here. If you're here, would you please raise your hand? Okay, uh, stand. Let me let me let me announce them. Go ahead, Chris Trelevin, Bill Calvert, Diane Browning. Any others over here in the choir? I didn't want to miss any. Uh, okay, Melissa Nelson, Claire Wall, I'm looking over there. Oh, <laughs> Pat Moore, uh, I think, is there, am I missing anybody? Is that everybody? We have been uh, working together for months and came up with this theme, and it's fun to hear it sung and uh, affirmed that part of what is what we are about is putting our faith in action. Our hearts and faith, hands in service. 50 years of reflecting God's light. 
And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to look back over those years and to see different times. Uh, I hope you take a moment and at least go out and see some of the pictures on the walls, uh, especially out this hallway and over here about some of the early beginnings of the church and some of our celebrations throughout the years. If you're part of our 50th anniversary group on Facebook, you're able to see a lot of pictures, and those really are a lot of fun to see. Well, part of it was uh, we, uh, in, uh, when we were celebrating our 35th anniversary, we put a time capsule together, and uh, last month with the youth, we um, unearthed it. So here is that video. Enjoy uh, that moment. So we've displayed it in the narthex if you'd like to see some of the contents of it. And we're planning to do one for our 50th um, during the homecoming weekend. But an opportunity for us to celebrate how God was at work, especially uh, at that time and how God continues to be at work. Our scripture this morning comes from Acts chapter 2. Listen for God's word for you this day. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, 
both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for your spirit that continues to be at work and your spirit that is with us this day. And we don't want to just go through the motions of another Pentecost Sunday, but believe that you have a word for each of us. So free us from those things that are clouding our minds, and we pray that your word would be tailor-made for us this day. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I love that question at the end of the scripture. What does this mean? Here, say that with me. What does this mean? Say it like you mean it. What does this mean? I mean, isn't that a great question for all of life? What is going on? What is God up to? What am I up to? What does this mean and how should we react to it? What does this mean for the early church? What does this mean for being a disciple about following Jesus Christ? You know, there's a lot of people who would like to tell you all the right answers, right? One of the things we celebrate at Northwoods for years, decades, is that we're not always sure of all the right answers, but we're trying to ask the right questions. And the Bible is full of some wonderful questions. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Who's my neighbor? What's the greatest commandment? What are you searching for? How many times do I need to forgive someone? What is truth? So the question today, (laughs) what does this mean? Now, think about those first people at Pentecost, people from all over the world. They were celebrating the Hebrew Feast of Feasts. That's where that word Pentecost comes from, in from all over the world, making a pilgrimage. It was uncertain times for them, living with a different country in charge and not sure what the future would be like and changes that are taking place in society, crazy times, people frustrated with their government, their leaders, frustrated with what's going on. Sound familiar? And wouldn't you agree we too are living in crazy, uncertain times? Just a few weeks ago, a white supremacist, 18-year-old, armed with an assault rifle, walks into a supermarket in Buffalo, New York, shoots 13, 11 of whom were black, and kills 10 of them. Soon after that, a couple weeks ago, an 18-year-old, armed with an assault rifle, just purchased on his 18th birthday, walks into an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, kills 19 elementary-age children and two teachers. But guess how many mass shootings there have been in our country since Uvalde? I was blown away by it, literally. 20 mass shootings. That was as of Wednesday when the Tulsa mass shooting took place. And we know last night there was another mass shooting. 14 people were shot in Philadelphia with three people dying crazy times and the question for us is what does this mean and how should we as people who are trying to follow Jesus Christ what should our response be I love our church and the willingness to dive into this issue a couple years ago with our contemporary issues class looking at school shootings and violence and even inviting a mother from Santa Fe to tell her story. 
she was recently interviewed saying, we were promised so much and nothing has changed. What does this mean? And where is God in all of this? Kind of crazy, isn't it? Challenge. One pastor writes about Pentecost. I believe the average Christian is much like the Ephesians believers when the apostle came to visit them in Acts 19 and said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They replied, they didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. And I do believe there's many of us wondering what the Holy Spirit is up to. And is God's Spirit available today for each of us? Somehow, we're caught between Calvary and Pentecost. One theologian said, Bethlehem means God with us. Calvary means God for us. And Pentecost means God in us. A lady was having trouble with her watch, and she went to the repair shop, and she told a watch repairman that there was a problem, and the watch wouldn't run. She kept winding it up every day, but nothing would happen. And then the repairman took the watch and said, Lady, your problem isn't that the watch doesn't run. It is that the watch doesn't run by winding it. It must have a battery. All the work you've been doing won't help that watch run. It needs internal power. There's a sermon there, isn't there? We need God's Spirit in our lives to move in ways that will help us experience God's presence. Isn't it kind of remarkable all the different people and countries that were listed in that first Pentecost. And somehow God's Spirit moved in a way that each of them were able to understand people speak, especially about God's working in their lives at the time. Something that Pentecost tells us that even though we are different, we can still be together in one place Worshipping the one God. And sometimes God works differently than what we expect or desire. That's a little rough for, for Presbyterians who like things decently and in order, right? In fact, when I was working on my doctor of ministry at a Presbyterian seminary, our professor said, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about what Christ has done for us on the cross but not a lot about what God's Spirit is doing today. Hmm. We leave that to our brothers and sisters in other denominations, like my grandparents, Pentecostals. But they were all together in one place, and what's kind of remarkable, over and over in this passage, it says that the people there were amazed and ast astounded they were terrified and couldn't explain it. So thinking that we're going to explain it, even when the people there couldn't explain it, is, is a futile, right? Sometimes God does God's thing, and that's it. It says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you know if someone is truly filled with, with the Holy Spirit. How do you know? Is it by what color of shirt you're wearing on Pentecost Sunday? Is it by how many verses you know by memory? Paul says in Galatians, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If those words don't come up sometime during our funeral and eulogy, we're in big trouble. Amen. 
And what's sad about this passage is that some experience it in a powerful way and some dismiss it. They are filled with new wine. That's fake news. Does building a bed really make a difference for anybody in our community? Does helping someone at the at NAM, does it really make a difference with that person? Does helping the person down in Guatemala really make a difference? And we can buy into it and try to rationalize. And, and the question is, are we part of God's spirit that's helping us understand each other? Or are we adding to the division? And unfortunately, sometimes the church adds to the division. I think I've shared this with you before when Jared and Lisa were playing sports at uh, Memorial Drive, I had put on the back of their shirts Philippians 2.14. And it wasn't for the children. It was for the parents. Do everything without complaining or arguing. You should see how parents te treat high school um, referees and people. It was embarrassing. Are we so competitive that we forget what we're trying to do? Are we arguing about trivial things? Or are we helping our church bring people together to understand one another, to be filled with the Holy Spirit? How do we respond? What does this mean? What should the church be up to? That's part of listening to God's Spirit. And sometimes God does things differently than what we expect. So as we were putting this service together, to be honest, I wanted Stuart to preach another sermon. He wasn't up for it. So I pinned him down in his room and interviewed him. I'm going to show you an excerpt from it. The whole interview will be put online later this week on our Facebook page and YouTube page. But I wanted to pick his brain about how God's Spirit worked in Northwoods. And I have to tell you, there were some surprising things I learned about how God's Spirit was at work. Enjoy. Hello there. I'm here with Stuart McCall. Stuart McCall uh, was the senior pastor of Northwoods Presbyterian Church during a, tr during a tremendous time in the life of our church. And on this celebration of our 50th anniversary, I thought we would pick Stuart's uh, mind for some of the events and issues that he faced and some of the most memorable parts of his ministry. Enjoy. All right, so Stuart, the first question I have is, how did a Northeasterner like yourself end up serving as the pastor of a church in Houston, Texas? Yeah, well, it's very, very complicated, uh, but, but easy to explain. That there were people who worked for oil companies, and they moved from the Northeast to Texas. And uh, they had been members of uh, my, the church that, that was in Connecticut. And uh, they said, Stuart McCall's available possible. Those years, um, I mean, those were terrific years in the life of Northwoods. Yeah, it, um, it, it grew rapid. You, it, it grew. And what what was leading to that? Why do you think that was part of what was taking place at Northwoods? Oh, I think I think the, the area was growing, and our singles program, which I had nothing to do with, <laughs> was 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 ex exceptional, very good, and very effective. And we incorporated that. They incorporated them, that into the into the body of the church. So during that time, uh, Stuart, uh, a lot of other ministries in the community formed. And uh, in fact, if um, why don't you grab that gavel that's on the? Uh, <laughs> and I think that's a gavel uh, for you being the president. Of, I was the president of Nam. Yeah, of the, of the board, maybe in the first few years. Yeah. And tell us, um, what can you tell us about how that started, how NAM started? The Northwest Assistance Ministry started at Northwoods. 
Well, that was the first place we met. And in fact, Northwoods was one of the ten founding churches. Yeah. And um, so, when you think of some of the most memorable times at Northwoods, um, you know, we talked before, but uh, tell us about who Maddie uh, was, what what she was doing in the church, and what took place, and how did Northwoods respond? She was she was already there when I came. She she was. She was hired as the, uh, the maintenance person, right. and uh, but she was a genius with little with small children. They loved her, and she loved them, and she was marvelous. And she was accused of sexual child abuse mm-hmm. of, a, of a by a person who came to the church only once as far as I know, and left left a child in in Maddie's care and she was so she was accused. So then here's a a, a beloved employee right. who is charged yeah. and then And I mean she was it's now grown dim, but they she was proclaimed guilty. Right, kind of like arrested. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, and and and, uh, um, right. and they it was a it was a it was a big case. Yeah. Um, and, and being African American probably didn't help her situation. No, probably not. Yeah. And um, so, but, how but, did the church deal with that? How did you deal with that? With the with Maddie's uh, being accused of this crime, the church was phenomenal. It simply said she could not have done this, uh, and I, you know, we went to the court, wherever, yeah, and uh, but they they were phenomenal. Uh, there wasn't anybody. If there was anybody, I don't remember it. They most people said she could not have done this. She is our care, caregiver, and she's she's been our our child care as well as our maintenance person, and uh, they just it was incredible. So it must have been quite a um, relief and a lot of joy when she was exonerated yeah. from that. Yeah. Yeah. And to I, and with her. you know, it was. I, and I don't. I. I'm too old now. I don't remember. <laughs> but but I remember that there was. Everybody stood and clapped and so forth. I don't know. Very powerful. Yeah. So, uh, but Maddie's being in the church was so important that tell us what happened when you moved from the gym to the sanctuary. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what happened that day. She, Maddie, walked, led the group to the to the new sanctuary. The procession. Yeah. And were the children with her? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, and how powerful that was yeah, yeah. to this person who meant so much to yeah. the church is leading to a new chapter. Yeah, yeah, um, very powerful. You, Northwoods has always been yeah. a leading church in right, right. of all the churches around the country that give to One Great Hour right. of Sharing. Well, One Great Hour of Sharing was a, a pet of mine. I mean, I I saw what happened. It's work. I mean, I first hand, first hand, and uh, I came back from that trip inspired. Yeah. Uh, well, and it must have been contagious because the church was inspired. Well, they they they, they gave. It was a major major effort, and right. which which the which the church responded to. The church helping to support a new Planned Parenthood in was that, was that Northwest was that? Harris County. They financed the whole thing. Okay, but <laughs> so how, how does your session, um, you know, realizing the political nature of these? Things, they 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 did, and they and it didn't. They said this is the right thing to do. 
And why did you feel like it was the right thing to do? Because there was no place for, I, at that time, for women to go for, to, for, planned, parent, for planned Parenting okay. uh, in, in the area. And if I remember, but tell me if I'm wrong, it wasn't for abortions, the clinic. That no, no, no. That, it was that was, for it was family planning. Planning, planning, yeah. And things like that, yeah, yeah. which. Uh, and and, and uh, they were picketing it because they didn't believe in Planned Parenthood. Right. Did attendance go down? No, it went up. <laughs> I was amazed. I was amazed because I thought, you know, people had to pass through picket lines to come to church. Right. Literally, pip, and the attendance went up. Huh, interesting. And I, I think in part because people in, were interested in, that any church would be doing this. Okay. One would have thought that the church would have problems. But in those days, it was, it was easier yeah, than it is. A, it is for you. <laughs> <laughs> not as polarized. Yeah. As well, a, no, it was not as secular. Yeah. Oh, as a as a whole society. As a whole society. Yeah. yeah. Um, you also had, um, you know, you were pastoring during the ups and downs with ordination issues for the denomination on votes <laughs> to ordain or not ordain um, gay elders and pastors. Yeah, yeah. And uh, during your ministry, one of your staff members came out. Tell us a little bit about um, Northwood's response and your response to his situation. The music director, who was beloved, uh, separated from his wife, who went to. <laughs> she worked at Memorial. Memorial Drive. Memorial Drive, I think. Right. And uh, and 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 took up with a man, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to the session, and I said, "You should know all this." What's happening? You, you, what's happening? And you should. He's a staff person, and you you have every right to know what's happening with him as as an employee of the of the church. And it was remarkable. The session said, "Stuart, is he doing his job?" And I said, "Yes." And he said, "Then what business says?" Is it of ours? Who he's married to? Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And I look at that. I don't think there are many sessions that would have said that. Especially during that season. Well, yeah. I mean, but but they literally. I thought. I thought they would have. They said. If he's not doing his job, come back and tell us. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't want to hear any more about it. That that was remarkable. Yeah. Um, that's a powerful story, Stuart. Um, I think Northwoods has, and and not because of me, but but it's always stood on the edge of. of Doing the right, doing what they thought God called them to do. Yeah. And in the long run, if we uh, are open to hearing God's call and doing yeah. what God's call is, that's when real ministry yeah. takes yeah. place. Well, Stuart, on behalf of our church, we want to thank you for <laughs> your leadership and uh, the way that you've helped us. Uh, build on such a great found foundation as we move ahead. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for your yeah. friendship.
one problem. I know, that was a program that automatically did the subtitles. <laughs> we'll fix that for the Academy Award presentation. But thank you, Stuart, for your ministry, uh, for being open to God's Spirit, to take the issues of the day, to ask what does this mean and how do we respond as an instrument of God's grace and love. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we are grateful for those times we see your spirit at work. For the times we see division and barriers and walls give in to unity and community. For the times when we have an opportunity to support people who are going through difficult seasons. So we pray, Lord, especially as we enter into a new 50 years, that you would help us to have the faith and the action that supports our faith as we continue your ministry of sharing your grace and love with others. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Jesus invited a diverse group of people to be part of that transforming work of getting the word out, of going to all nations and making disciples of all nations. And it had its challenges. Even that last supper, there were challenges. Knowing that someone would betray Jesus, someone who would deny Jesus, a close friend, must have been a very difficult time. But this table represents, we believe, more in grace than judgment. All are welcome at this table. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we do thank you for what this table represents. It's a table for sinners who get it sometimes and miss it other times. But this day, we pray that you would set aside these common elements so that what we say may be your word and what we do may be your work. Draw all of us closer to your son Jesus, and it's in his strong name we pray. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. When you eat of it, remember me. And in a like manner, he took the cup. And again, after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. When you drink of it, remember me. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. They say we are what we eat. May it be so. Let's partake of communion together. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we do thank you for feeding us at your table, for strengthening us to be your instruments of love in the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So at this point, I'm going to invite the youth and the adults who will be going down on our mission trip. Is it tomorrow? They leave tomorrow. Would you please come up on the chancel steps and face the congregation? They're going down to support the Presbyterian Border Ministry that is really trying to help with this humanitarian crisis on our border. What do you do? Jesus says, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And so part of being hearts of faith is knowing that, but giving God time to use our hands in service. And uh, 
Here's some of the folks going. I, let me read the names of the youth. Brooke Butler, Travis Dunmire, Alex Gutierrez, Andrew Jones, Grace Keener, Miguel Padilla, Allison Sweeney, Jared White, Jonathan White. Uh, and we have adults, John Millette, David Puig. Is Dante going? <laughs> okay, just checking. I didn't see his name on the list. Cass Taylor, uh, Chris Trelevin. And I even hear you're bringing back neighbors from beyond Kansas. And uh, Ron Thomas is coming, and uh, that should be terrific. I think you're going to have an awesome time because you're going to be able to put your hearts in faith and put your hands in service. And so I have some questions for you relating to our mission statement. Do you want to follow Jesus Christ in sharing Christ's compassion and love with others? If so, respond, I do. Relying on the mercy and forgiveness of God, will you celebrate God's grace and be an instrument of God's grace with others? If so, respond, I will. I will. will you, by study and service, seek to grow and deepen your faith as you help create community with coworkers and with the people on the border? If so, respond, I will. I will. will you be nice to Mary Megan? We will. <laughs> okay, very good. Will you be a faithful member of this team working to make a difference in the lives of people with those you meet and with each other by offering yourself, your time, talents, and resources? If so, respond, I will. I will. All right, question to the congregation. Do you promise to pray for and support this team and support them on their trip? If so, respond enthusiastically, we do. We do. All right, let's pray together. Gracious God, we are grateful for these people and their willingness to give up some of their summer vacation in serving you. Lord, like that day on Pentecost, we pray that you would move and work in a powerful way so that people experience more of your love. Draw people together so that there's more understanding and more love. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Can we give a clap offering to God for these folks? All right. Uh, before we sing our final hymn, I want you, I think it's actually in our bulletin, Kinley's hymn that he wrote, we were able to talk about our theme and about our church. You will see sleep in heavenly peace in this hymn. You'll see our mission statement. You'll see this theme. It's an opportunity for all of us to try to consider ways that each of us are called by God to put our faith into action. Let's stand and sing together.
powerful. Thank you for the way that you are helping people experience God's grace and love. I'm going to say a prayer for the blessing of the food that we're about to eat down in the uh, fellowship hall, so let's pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for the blessings in our lives. For the food we're about to eat, we pray you would strengthen us with it so that we can continue your powerful work of sharing grace and love in the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.